who are avid Thurber readers. And like a lot of people, we like being read to. You like being read to. We like reading aloud. And the truth of it is, we kind of like to hear ourselves read. Sorry. Characters in James Thurber's stories and cartoons have been thoroughly analyzed over the years by art critics, social commentators, psychiatrists, and readers of American humor. The Thurber man and the Thurber woman make us laugh, they make us groan, and sometimes they make us wince when they come a little too close and it seems as though he were writing about us. The Thurber dog, that makes us smile. The human species is both horrible and wonderful, Thurber said. Occasionally I get very mad at human beings, but there's nothing you can do about it. I like people and hate them at the same time. I wouldn't draw them in cartoons if I didn't think they were horrible, and I wouldn't write about them if I didn't think they were wonderful. So here's a collection wonderful, horrible people, and the occasional dog. But first, a few facts. James Grover Thurber was born in 1894 at 251 Parsons Avenue to Charles Leander Thurber and Mary Agnes Fisher Thurber, also known as May. In 1902, while the Thurbers were living temporarily in Falls Church, Virginia, James was shot in the eye in a bow and arrow game with his brothers, causing blindness in one eye and an eventual loss of sight in his other eye during adult years. From 1903 to 1913, James attended, attended Sullivan Avenue Elementary School, Douglas Junior High School, and East, I'm sorry, Douglas Junior High and East High School. In his senior year, he was elected president of his class and he graduated with honors. Thurber entered the Ohio State University in 1913, commuting by trolley from his home at 77 Jefferson Avenue, the present Thurber House. For the next several years, he struggled with classes in biology, gym, and ROTC, partly because of his poor eyesight. He enjoyed great success as a fraternity man, as a reporter and humor writer for The Lantern and the Sundial, and as a playwright and former for the campus theater group Strollers. He left the university in 1918 without graduating. He married for the first time in 1922 the beautiful Ohio State co-ed Althea Adams. The Thurbers traveled to Europe where James worked as a freelance writer. When they returned to the U.S., they moved to New York City and from 1926 until his death in 1961, Thurber earned wide acclaim as a writer, playwright, cartoonist, and in the estimation of many critics, the preeminent American humorist of the 20th century, equaling the stature of Mark Twain. And it all started here in Columbus, Ohio. Thurber's grandfather, William Fisher, Columbus's purveyor of fruits and vegetables, enjoyed strolling about town in his familiar black derby hat with a fresh rose clenched between his gold cap teeth. He particularly enjoyed having his picture taken Bryce Road House was decorated with his photographs taken all over the state. Thurber's mother, Mary Agnes Fisher Thurber, is seen as the charming, flamboyant lady of the house, who, as a young woman, dreamed of being an actress. She devised hilarious practical jokes to entertain family and friends. She was bright and witty, with a penchant for astrology and dogs. She was the central figure in the Thurber family, and she died just days short of her 90th birthday. Charles Thurber, James' father, was a kind, honest, generous man who early in his life, like his wife, had aspired to a life on the stage, but ended up in politics. He was never successful as a candidate, but was appointed to several mid-level city and state positions. And there is Mar Marjorie Albright, a family friend who was a second mother to Jamie Thurber. A natural nurse, she delivered James, and on another occasion saved the life of his father, Charles. 
She was a tough, independent woman and a nurturer of gardens and children. James loved her. These Columbus characters and many more, cleverly disguised, show up again and again in the stories and cartoons of James Thurber. Keep that in mind as we give you cartoon captions by James Thurber. So I said to the teller, how can I be overdrawn when I have all these checks left? I never really rallied after the birth of my first child. In first aid class today, we learned 11 different ways to poison people. <laughs> you may call us sleepwalking, but I say she's promiscuous. So she says to me, why did we have to purchase Louisiana when we got all the other states for nothing? What do you want me to do with your remains, George? I'm wearing gloves because I don't want to leave any fingerprints around. Well, if I called the wrong number, why did you answer the phone? <laughs> My wife must have spent Halloween with her first husband. You wait here, and I'll bring the etchings down. <laughs> My husband wanted to live in sin even after we were married. One martini is all right. Two are too many. Three is not enough. If I told you a dream I had about you, Mr. Price, would you promise not to do anything about it? Unless you really want to. Do you realize it took Paul Revere over two hours to rouse the widow Matthews that night? <laughs> Sometimes the news from Washington is, forces me to believe that your mother and your brother Ed are in charge. 